Hey everyone, Chris the Thrift Shop Hustler with another What Sold on eBay video for you today. We have a special video for you today. We're going to go over the top 10 things sold in the month of October in 2019. If you're unfamiliar with this channel, I go over things that have sold in our charity shop. I am the eBay hub manager for the American Cancer Society. So definitely go down there and click the subscribe button. Uh, and any time during this video, definitely click the like button. Also, we're going to go over the top 10 items. So we're going to go from 10 to number 1. And at the end of this video, uh, definitely leave a comment below. Let me know what your most surprising one was. We do have some art that went over $800 towards the end of the video. So you're going to want to stay tuned to that. Our largest sale was an art-related item. So you're going to definitely want to tune into that. So uh, let's get right into it. Without further ado, we're going to have lots of great information on all these items. So uh, it, like I said, if you definitely learned something in this video, click the like button. So uh, first item, this is going to be number 10. This is a Disney Mulan film crew yearbook from 1998. Um, Disney... Uh, to my knowledge, did a couple of these books in the late 90s. Uh, I know there was a Hercules one. We just sold that one, I think, uh, this month. And this Mulan one sold in October for a total of $184. Now, what this is, is during the wrap, or I should say the end of the, the show, or the movie, they had uh, these yearbooks produced, uh, Disney and these were given out to cast members. Uh, some of these are signed, as you can see. This one actually had a pretty good amount of signatures in it. As we can see, this, uh, um, you know, these are signed. And the thing is, we live in Burbank, or I live in Burbank, and our shop's in Burbank, so uh, it's not uncommon to find this kind of rare Disney stuff. Now, these are very rare. I don't know how many of these that were produced. Uh, there wasn't that many, so if you're in the California area, you know, you're more likely going to find this kind of stuff. Disney Studios is in Burbank, which is uh, where we're located, so it's not uncommon to get stuff like this donated to us. And it just goes to show, like, you know, whatever's in your town, whatever's in your state, you know, you're going to find more of certain items. It's just how it is. It's location-specific items. And so it's just one of those things to look out for. You know, I doubt anyone's ever going to really come across something like this because this is super rare, especially with the signatures and all. Um, but another pro tip is to just kind of, you know, if you ever see any kind of animation books or Disney kind of animation things, to definitely look inside them. Um, you know, for us, you know, being in Burbank, it's not uncommon to find the signatures and everything like that. But, you know, if you're out there and about... Definitely look inside uh, any kind of art book and see if artists have signed them because that will add uh, some value to your piece. It could add some significant value uh, depending on the artist. So definitely look out for this stuff. Uh, number nine is this funky egg lamp. It's either from the 60s or the 70s. I think I pinpointed this to the late 60s. It is a frosted glass table egg lamp. It is mid-century modern, which is all the rage right now in home decor. As you can see here, you can change the bulb. So, you know, if I was to purchase this, I would probably put in a, a white light bulb because it would make more sense than a than an orange E-type bulb, as we can see here. Now, getting the bulb in there, I don't know how they do it. I'm sure there's a way to do it uh, to just kind of get in there and to switch the bulb out. I know that that little plate comes apart. As we can see here, we'll take a little bit of a look in here. I did look inside it. This little kind of thing kind of screws open, and then I don't know how they get the bulb in there. I'm sure there's a way that you know you can put a smaller bulb in there, or there's just a way that uh, that bottom foot comes off or something like that. But I didn't want to mess with it. It worked, and we had this with local sale only. Uh, this thing is super delicate. Now it's not like super super delicate where it's gonna break if you just touch it, but it's delicate enough where I would not ship this thing there's only a local pickup and we had this for sale for the longest time for uh, 599 dollars you might think that's a little bit of a crazy price but when it comes to kind of these rare items that you really there's no really precedent i would definitely uh, price it high because you can always bring it down 
I call that the high-low theory. A lot of resellers uh, have their own basic uh, concept of the high-low theory. And just uh, the high-low theory basically is price high, and then you can always drop the price. You don't want to sell low uh, for something that, you know, is worth a lot more than you might realize. Though, um, when I looked at worth point, there was some of these that have sold in the neighborhood of, you know, three to six hundred dollars. So uh, this one sold for one hundred and ninety one dollars and sixty three cents. This was a local pickup. Um, you know, they kind of got a good deal on this, especially for the condition. It was in pretty good condition. There was a few little uh, I don't want to say nicks, but a little bit of rubs and things like that. It wasn't 100 percent perfect. It did have a little bit of issues, and, you know, when we first got it, I did give this a good cleaning. <laughs> I rubbed my egg, and I cleaned it very well. But anyways, uh, this was a good sale, uh, $191. Look out for this kind of stuff. Uh, definitely mid-century modern is all the rage, especially barware and things. And this is just a very cool item. And like I said, you know, we can see it that it works, and that if you put in a a, a white light bulb, it would look really even really cooler than you know the unless you you know you're going after that warm uh, light look for sure uh number eight we have this hagen renneker and um i did i was on a courtney's channel the other night and i did a probably one of my last live interviews and i'm gonna leave a link to it above and so i had a really good time and we did mention these horses in that video and um, I'm going to leave the link up there. You should probably see it. And you can check out that uh, interview. Uh, and also for a special kind of treat, though, you know, I let some of uh, Courtney's subscribers on a Patreon exclusive video. I'm going to link the Hagen Renneker Patreon exclusive video below. So if you want to check out more about these horses, definitely go and look below. So uh, Hagen Renneker has been around for a long time. They are these porcelain horses. They've done little porcelain animals throughout the years, but they're most known for these horses. They stand about six inches tall, and this one happens to be a buckskin, which is probably one of the most sought-after colorways. It's kind of like a light brown tan horse, and if we can kind of look in here, I'll show you what they look like. This thing actually had three repairs, some cracked legs and some repairs, and it still went for $212.49. Uh, Hagen Renneker, you'll you'll know that these little holes on the bottom is one of the kind of giveaways that you have one of those, and also just the quality you can usually tell um, just with the quality of the paint jobs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all these horses will be named, so each one of these horses will have a name. This one happens to be Two Bits, and luckily the lady that donated, uh, like I think she donated like five or six of these different horses. Uh, this one ap happens to sell for the highest, so that's why we're showing it right now. And um, like I said, definitely check out that video below if you want to learn about Hagen Renickers. But anyways, uh, like I said, look for the buckskin. These things in mint condition can go for six to $800. It's not uncommon for some of the rarer pieces to go over $1,000. So this is a very interesting bolo to look out for. Uh, Hagen Renneker. Some of the like the darker colored horses don't really go for uh, too much, but if you can find a mint condition one, uh, they still go for a pretty good amount of money. You always want to pick these up if you can find these at estate sales. You're more than likely going to find these at estate sales. Now, Reagan, um, Reagan, Hagen Renneker does little, also little like frogs and insects and things like that, little cats and dogs. Uh, those don't go for a crazy amount of money. It's the horses. But if you can find those other ones still for like a dollar or two dollars each, definitely pick those up because I think you can easily get 10 to 20 dollars for the little other animals. Now, they also have other horses that they did that are kind of like glued to these cards or they have uh, ceramic bases. Those are kind of newer ones and they don't really go for a crazy amount of money. But like I said, if you can find those for a good price, definitely scoop those up. For sure. Uh, number seven, we have the sterling silver lot. Uh, precious metals, uh, scrap value wise, you know, they go for pretty much around, you know, whatever the scrap value is. So definitely, if you have, if you come across sterling silver and things like that, it's definitely wise to kind of lot it up and sell it as kind of like a scrap lot. Uh, that's what we did here. This was 14.93 ounces. It sold for a total of $214.70. Uh, 
Uh, there was some different varieties. There was 925. I think there was a couple of 800s in here, which I'm not sure if that means 80% silver. I know that some uh, European, um, let's see if I can see it there. I don't think that one was one of the 800 ones. Uh, some, I think, Italian sterling is marked 8 800. Um, anyone below can definitely correct me on that. But anyways, uh, like I said, you know, silver and gold sells all day long. Um, you know, if you can definitely save it and wait for the prices to go up, you know, the price does fluctuate with precious metals. Uh, right now, we're kind of in a low spot. I think it's, you know, 16 something an ounce or something like that. It was as high as almost 20 a few months ago. So that's why I'm saying it fluctuates big time. So if you have a pretty good reserve of this stuff, you want to wait till the prices are spiking when you sell stuff like this. And so uh, we get this stuff, you know, on occasion, so we just sell it just to sell it. But, you know, if you have the means to hold on to silver and gold and wait for those market fluctuations, you can really, you know, add, you know, 20, 40, 60, 100 thousand dollars to your uh, profit margin if you wait for that. Uh, number six, speaking of gold, we have this gold nugget pendant. This was a 4.58 grams of 14 karat gold. You know, you can definitely look out, you know, look up the weights uh, in the gold price in Google. You know, there's tons of uh, great links that you can look up this kind of stuff for the weight. We usually sell this kind of thing with weight. We don't want to go under weight or uh, I should say spot value. I guess that's the term they use. So, uh, you know, this sold for a total of $224.10, which is way above spot. And so, um, you know, it was definitely a good a good sale here for this 14 karat piece. Now, usually jewelry will be marked 14 karat. Some of the vintage stuff won't. Uh, I definitely highly suggest um, investing in a gold test kit if you can, uh, if you can swing it. It's, they're not that expensive. They're like $20, but... They do involve chemicals. Uh, you can also go to, uh, if you have a jeweler in your neighborhood or something like that, or if you have a friend that's a jeweler, you can definitely go and bring some of the stuff for them to test. They have amazing gear usually at jewelry stores and stuff like that. So uh, this was number six. This sold for $224.10. Uh, number five is Department 56. This is a Sleepy Hollow Witch's Hat Tavern lot. These are two different types of things. This sold for a total of $230.03. Department 56, people are pretty familiar with if you're a reseller and you've been around for a while, you are very familiar with the brand Department 56. They're mostly known for their Christmas decor, but their Halloween stuff definitely adds a premium. You know, you should definitely be pulling this stuff out uh, in August and September enlisting any Halloween stuff for Halloween season and uh, we sold this right after Halloween I do believe or right just right before Halloween so uh, we still got a pretty good amount of money for this thing and uh, this did sell for two hundred and thirty dollars and three cents for this lot of two now uh, one of the things to just be careful and look out for is you know so a lot of this stuff is made out of ceramics it breaks very easily it's very common to find these things in cracked and broken pieces, things that are repaired. So if you're going to buy this stuff, just make sure that, you know, you take a good look at it. And uh, just be aware that even some stuff that's broken can still go for a pretty good amount of money. And so, uh, but just, you know, keep an eye out for this because you're going to want to disclose any breakage to your potential customers uh, for sure. And this was a very quick sale. I think we sold this within 48 hours of listing this. Uh, and by the way, if you're looking for a deal, if you're looking for something, definitely go down there, click the link to the American Cancer Society eBay page, and you know, leave a. You can send us an offer, a reasonable offer, and we'll definitely consider it. Uh, so this was number five, Department 56 Sleepy Hollow, $230.03. Definitely look out for this stuff. So now we're going to get into the top four. Number four, Bob Mackie Neiman Marcus Ruby Beaded Dress. This is a size 8. This sold for $237.59. This was an amazing dress. This thing was pretty much made out of all beads, and I think there was like some little bit of crystals, or no, I forget what those things are called. They're not sequins, but they're like those kind of uh, 
reflective flat metal disc things. I don't know what those are called. If you know what those are called, definitely leave a comment below. As we can see here, this thing was super heavy because of all the beads. And, you know, we were trying to get $1,300 for this at first because it's the high-low theory. These are one of those things that you don't come across. This is a very rare dress, though it was not a one-of-a-kind Cher dress, which can go for like $5,000 if you know what that is. Uh, Cher was a singer from the 60s and the 70s. I mean, she's been singing throughout the years, and most people know who Cher is. Um, Bob Mackie made a lot of one-of-a-kind dresses for hers, and those pop up every once in a while. Those go for about three to seven thousand dollars. So, um, you know, we're trying to, you know, we're not going to reach that price. So I thought thirteen hundred dollars was reasonable, and we brought it down. Uh, we did sell it for two hundred and thirty-seven dollars and fifty-nine cents, and this was a, a joy to film, a joy to film, a joy to like take a photo of, put on the mag, the magazine, <laughs> put on the. Uh, what are what are they called? Mannequins. That's what the word is. <laughs> I'm already losing it. It's already not even the top three yet. So anyways, definitely look out for Bob Mackie stuff. He does like sweaters and things like that. So if you can get those for a pretty good price at a state sale, definitely pick them up. Uh, they don't go for a, the sweaters and things like that and other pieces don't go for a crazy amount of money. But if you can get them for a good price, definitely pick them up. They do sell through eventually. Uh, here we go with the top three. Number three is this Art Deco 1934 recipe dial porcelain cocktail shaker by E.F. Colette. Uh, this sold for a total of $478.57. Uh, that is with shipping and tax, respectively. This was a beautiful piece. Um, I'm surprised this thing has survived. As you can see here, the, the kind of... Uh, rubber sealer has definitely seen some age i think uh it's you know running close to you know getting up there in age and so those things disintegrate you could probably scrape that out and, re and replace it i wouldn't say scrape it but at least you can get it out uh, with some care and uh, definitely replace that if you're going to be using this um, like i said mid-century barware is the rage right now in home decor you know there's a lot of people selling that stuff for good money and like I said, uh, this is a, not only a rare piece because these things mostly break and, and age over the years. This thing's in impeccable condition. It's 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 an amazing condition. And as you can see here, this sold for a total of four hundred and seventy eight dollars and fifty seven cents. So definitely keep an eye out for these uh, mid century Art Deco. I don't know why. I guess they called. Well, I guess it wouldn't be mid century. My my bad. It's Art Deco, which is like. Art Deco is mostly known for the thir for the 20s and the early 30s. I was calling this thing um, mid-century, which is like 50s, 60s stuff, and it's not. Uh, so my apologies for that. But anyways, it's kind of around the same thing. Old barware definitely has a premium. And, you know, thanks to shows like Mad Men and, and stuff like that, and a lot of the retro uh, throwback shows, this stuff is gained in popularity. So definitely look that up. Now for our top two items, we have two pieces of art here. I talked about this in the very beginning of the program. Uh, this is Spring Flowers by Norman Rockwell, a very well-known American artist. This is called Spring Flowers. This isn't a painting. This is a print, and it is an artist-proof print. And what does that mean? Usually when you see this in AP and print pencil, anytime you see AP, that means artist proof, which means that, you know, some of the artists will produce a, a, a small amount of uh, prints just to see, you know, what it looks like that they are okay to, to mass produce. And those prints usually go on and are marked, you know, artist proof that, you know, these are okay. And there's usually uh, not too many artist proofs out there because, like, the run of this poster might have been, like, I don't know, 2,000, 1,000. 10,000 about the artist proofs there's probably like you know a couple dozen if not you know two or three of them uh, this sold for eight hundred and sixty two dollars and sixty cents this was a absolute uh, interesting thing to ship because the client wanted it rolled up and shipped in a tube they did not want the frame uh, which was very nice the frame actually had some water damage as you can see here uh, to the mat so uh, luckily there was no water damage to the print and this was kind of an interesting thing. I thought about doing a video about uh, how I disassembled this and thing, but you know, I'm I'm not really doing too many 
uh, lengthy videos anymore with that kind of stuff. So I just decided just to just let it go. But anyways, um, definitely check out Norman Rock Rock Rockwell stuff if you can find it. You know, if you can find an original painting, you know, they go for a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, I think there's probably uh, Norman Rockwells that have gone for over a million. I haven't really researched Norman Rockwell original oils in a long time. I know that a, a few of them. They definitely if you if you if you find an original Norman Rockwell painting, it's it's for sure over a hundred thousand dollars. It's going to be between you know a hundred thousand and a million for sure. Though they're out there, you know, uh, this was a very nice piece because it had his signature in pencil, and this was very nice. So that was number two. So the grand finale, number one, another Norman Rockwell. This was donated. Two pieces were donated by the same person, if you can believe it or not. This is called The Runaway. It's a very um, iconic, famous print. Um, I'm sure if this original painting went up for sale, it'd probably go over a million dollars, if not more. Uh, this is a very famous Norman Rockwell piece. and other pieces, though, the Thanksgiving one, p p pretty much a lot of people uh, know that one. But this was also another one that, you know, is very iconic and is also an artist proof, which is, you know, makes this even more valuable. There's the Norman Rockwell signature. I, I always find that, you know, pretty well-known artists have really nice signatures. As you can see here, it's a beautiful signature. And another AP, and this one was actually shipped in the frame, which uh, I think the box alone costs like $14 to buy. Uh, if you need a box for uh, frames, definitely go to it, like mailboxes, etc., or one of those UPS stores that are in your neighborhood, the mom and pop ones. They usually will have all different types of, um, they're called mirror boxes. They're for mirrors because a lot of people have large mirrors in their homes. And they need to be, uh, when they're moving, they need to have those larger boxes. And that's what we use. And like I said, the box alone costs like $14. So just be prepared if you're ever shipping or selling art to have some of those boxes in hand. Because it's the worst at the last minute trying to scramble to find a box. So if you're going to you know, list one of these pricey things, a word of advice is definitely do that for sure. Anyways, this sold for a total of $1,500. And forty-seven dollars and forty-five cents. That's right, fifteen hundred and forty-seven dollars. And this was an amazing piece, one of our top sales of the month of October. Uh, once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Hope you had an amazing time looking at some of these items. Definitely go down there, click the like button, leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite top ten item was, and if anything surprised you in this video. And uh, like I said, uh, appreciate everyone tuning in and definitely click the subscribe button and click out, check out the links below. Uh, also, if you want to join our Patreon, you can definitely do that too. And the links are going to be below. So everyone have a great day and we'll see you soon. Take care.